Hi there, this is Michelle from Indie Author Blueprint, and I'm going to be talking today about the pros and cons of indie publishing and having your own imprint. This is going to be a shorter episode, just going to list the pros and list the cons. If you've been thinking about going the indie route, maybe you've been pursuing traditional publishing for a while, we talked about traditional publishing in the first episode, Maybe you've been pursuing that and you've decided you just need to go the indie route and you need to set up your own imprint, but you're trying to figure out, well, what are the pros and cons of doing that? Let's talk about those. First, let's talk about the pros. First, you have no gatekeepers. You have no literary agents or publishing uh, pros who are calling the shots. You don't have publishers saying no to you. You don't have literary agents saying no to you or change this or change that or do this or do that. So you get to do what you want. The other thing that is a pro is you have better profit margins. You have fewer people who are taking a cut of your profits, your agent, your publisher, your distributor, and more. So If you've talked to a traditional author, you might have them tell you that they earn a dollar a book or something like that. And that's because each of the people along the way, rightfully so, get to be paid for the work that they do. And some of them don't really get paid until you sell some books. And so, um, you know, your agent might work with you for a long time. They want to see you sell some books. But when you do all of that work yourself, you get to keep the profit. So you have better profit margins. I try to set my book cover prices in such a way that I earn five or six dollars per book when I sell them on Amazon. And I try to um, price them in such a way that when I'm selling them, when I'm out speaking, I might earn more than ten dollars per book, depending on whether I'm discounting them that day or not. So that's a much better profit margin. Another pro is that you have more control and flexibility. You get to make the final decisions about editing and design and marketing and distribution. So if you want to think outside the box and take risks, well, you can take that risk because you're the one funding it. And so you can have that risk. If you really, really want to go with a certain title, even though many people have told you not to, you could do that if you really wanted to. Um, I have really enjoyed, as an indie author and publisher, Being able to come up with some brainstorms of like, oh, I think this would be really amazing to do. And I know that somebody would probably say no to it, but I I get to have that flexibility and that control and try it out and see if it works. So that's been really fun for me, especially with the compilations that I do. I'm taking the full risk on that. I'm editing the pieces that come into me. I'm doing the cover. I'm doing the interior. And those have been really fun projects. And that is not something a traditional publisher would have wanted to take on. Another pro for being an indie author publisher is that it's faster. Depending on the speed of your editor and your designer, you could have a book pretty fast. Now, you have to write it, of course, and you need to do a good job of that because It has to be something someone wants to read, right? But then after that, with the clients that I work with, with my company, Mission and Media, uh, most of the time I tell them in six to eight weeks, we're going to have it done. So I always go with eight because if I can deliver early, I like that. I like to be on time or early. And so they might send it to me and I edit for two weeks and I send it back to them. And then while they're editing, I'm doing the cover and then it comes back to me and I'm doing the typesetting. And then while they're reviewing that, I'm doing the ebook. And it just keeps on bumping like that from like this six to eight week process. And in two months time, we're ready for them to upload it and it's set to go. So it is much faster because instead of two months to get it done from when you finished writing it, it could take a traditional publisher and your agent to find one two to three years or more. And so even once you get a book accepted, you're looking at a long time before it comes out. Um, The other thing that's a pro for me as an indie author publisher is I can run ads to my book from Amazon. And when I pay for that ad, I'm getting the sales. And so I'm not paying an ad for a book that I'm not going to make more than a dollar on, I can run the ads. And so in a given month, I might spend quite a bit on advertising to get that book to show up when people are, um, I I write Bible studies for some of my books. And so if somebody's buying a Bible study and they're done with it, and now they're looking for another one and they're shopping, mine will show up on those 
suggested sales for them. And so out of that, I do get sales. And so I can do that because I'm the indie author. The other thing that's a pro is that I can see my sales numbers up to the week in my dashboard. Now, I can't see them on the day the sale happens because I've covered in a previous episode that self-publishing is print on demand. And so when somebody purchases my book on Amazon, then Amazon puts it into production. And even when they pay with Prime, within a couple of days, they're going to have that book in their hands, but it got printed and sent to them right then. And so I see the numbers in my dashboard when it ships out. I don't see it on the day they made the purchase. I see it a couple of days later when Amazon fulfills their order and it gets shipped out to them. Um, It happens pretty fast. Now, an ebook, I can see up to the day, several times a day that updates, and I can see those sales. So it's helpful for me because I'm not waiting. Now, when I published, I, I went my very first book, I hired a self-publishing company. They took care of everything, um, well, a lot of it. And I had a distribution company that warehoused a few of my books and then they um, would ship them to retailers that way. And I didn't get reports for months later, so I didn't really know if my books were selling or not. There are some charts you can look at um, to see which, but they're not accurate. When I look at my own, I know they're not accurate because I know what my sales are and I know what that chart's saying. And I'm actually selling more books than what um, the chart is saying. So what I like about Amazon is, and, and being a KDP author or Ingram Spark and some of the other options is I can see those numbers weekly in my dashboard and I know what's making a difference. If I was doing a Facebook campaign or running an ad or something, I see the results right away. The other pro, and there's there's more, these are just a few, for being an indie author is that I might not need to write a book proposal. Writing a book proposal can almost be as daunting as writing the whole book itself with chapter synopses and like um, the marketing plan and and looking at books that are comparable in the market. Now, (laughs) you do want to write that proposal, and I'll get to that in a in a second. Um, but you don't have to do it with the perfection and the detail when you're doing it for your own book. I can skip a lot of the steps in the in what would have to go into a book proposal for a traditional publisher. All right, that's just a few of the pros for having an indie publishing company. Now let's look at the cons. First, I said in the beginning that a pro is having no gatekeepers. It is also a con. You have no gatekeepers. This means that as the author, you need to know the industry and you need to make good decisions about editing and design and quality because shortcuts will cost you. And I work with authors all the time who I give advice to and they don't want to take it. And it's like, okay, you you don't have a gatekeeper because it's your money. I'm a contractor. I'm working on doing what you're asking and I'm giving you advice, but you get to do it. And if I, you know, your cover doesn't match industry, like it doesn't look like it belongs in that genre, but you really, really wanted that photo on your cover and I tried to work with it or something like that. I do the best I can, but there's no gatekeeper. And so you have to know the industry and you have to make good decisions about that. And so if you skip the editing because you think I'm so good at grammar, I can spot the typo in the newspaper I can tell you, I can spot other people's typos, but I can't spot my own, and I have to hire an editor for my own work. So I ha- without those gatekeepers, I have to be a really good business owner. Otherwise, the shortcuts will cost. The other con is that there's limited distribution. The author slash publisher might not be able to get their book into the same markets as the traditional publisher. Yes, my book is on Amazon. Yes, actually, even through Amazon, I can get my book on Barnes & Noble and Books A Million and a bunch of online websites. But there are some other ones that they don't pick up my books. Here's an example. I have numerous compilations that I've published, like anthologies with different stories people send in. I recently discovered that one of those is on the Target website for sale, but I don't have any control over what goes on the Target website. They pick it up if it looks intriguing to them. 
And if I had a book distributor, I might, like a traditional one, I might have somebody who's like going and marketing and really working with those executives to say, you know, you should have these books on your shelves. It's not on the shelves, by the way. It's actually on their website. Target has a lot of things that are available online only. So as an indie author, I really don't have control over that kind of distribution. There are some other online retailers that I would like to have my books in, but I don't have the the ability to do that. So um, I'm limited. Another con is that there still is a stigma about self-publishing. It's not as much as it was. When I first started out, I decided I was going to become an indie author and self-publish my books. The first one I mentioned, I went with a company. Um, they took care of a lot of it, like getting it online and getting it out there and getting me connected to a distributor and that kind of thing. I paid for all of it, but I didn't like the covers that I saw on their website. So when I negotiated the agreement of what I was going to have them do, I asked them if I could hire my own cover designer. And um, I loved the cover that the designer I hired came up with. And so um that was something I provided to them. And then also they gave me a sample of the interior and it looked awful. It looked nothing at all like what I was envisioning. It was just a plain old book. It didn't have anything that made it look pretty. And it really needed to be pretty. Not fancy, just something that made when you open the chapters, it looked like the cover and it felt like that. So I ended up canceling that contract, paying what I needed to, to get out of that. And, um, having my cover designer also do the interior of my book and then sending it into that self-publishing company. It didn't go the greatest. I didn't have good sales and the company itself event- eventually folded. And so I had no distribution, but I had the file. I owned the file to my book. And so I got a new ISBN number and I re-released that book in 2018. And it's still my bestseller, which is so crazy to me because I've published a lot of books since then. And that book, now that I did it, I released it on Amazon KDP. It's my experimental book because I... I know I'm getting around to explaining why there's a stigma here. (laughs) I got off track just a little bit. Um, That book, I've experimented by not releasing it on some of the other platforms I do with my with my later work because I want to show people that you can do it, which is the basics. You have the file and you have Amazon KDP. And that's what I did. And it's it's still selling every month. And um, I'm really proud of the fact that coming back to the stigma that when I started out in this process over 10 years ago, and I said I was going to do that self-publishing, some of my dear friends are in traditional publishing, and I have those connections. And I know I saw it in their eyes. <laughs> like You're going down the wrong road, girl. And I just, I knew that there was a stigma. But I decided I wanted to do a quality job, and that I wanted it to be equal to a traditionally published book. I also know that now I would go back and re-edit that baby and make it a lot better, but it's selling and I'm leaving it alone. And you know what's happened over the years? The stigma has changed. More and more people have realized they want the control. They want all those pros I just mentioned. They want no gatekeepers. They want better profit margins. They want to be business owners and really take their writing seriously and not do it for vanity like I mentioned in a previous episode. And so the stigma is starting to fade away. And especially if you can set yourself up as someone who cares about being professional The stigma comes because they see self-published books as lower in quality. And if you can get the quality there, the stigma is not as bad. All right, a couple more things on the cons here. Another one is that you need to be self-motivated. I don't have anybody giving me deadlines when it comes to being an indie publisher. So if I get behind and life gets in the way, I just keep talking about this book that I'm working on and it doesn't come out. And so when you have an editor, an agent after you, you have somebody who's motivating you and you have a deadline. And so when you're an indie author publisher, you have to figure out how to be self-motivated to get your stuff done. Another con is that you have to pay for it. So you're going to invest the money. I've said in a previous episode that the the authors that I work with spend around $3,000 
Less if it's fiction because the design is so much simpler. More if it's complicated with a lot of fancy stuff in there. But for the most part, the authors I've worked with have spent between $2,500 and $3,300, I'm going to say, for those variations between complicated and simple. Um, And that is for editing. And that's with me going through their book twice to um, see if I missed anything the first time and then doing their cover. And um, I really work on those covers. I really want them to look uh, similar to traditionally published books. I work on their typesetting. I make their ebook. I'm, and then I give them some tools to prep ahead of time. And then I'm there with them on Zoom or on the phone when it comes to uploading their book onto KDP and publishing. I'm there coaching them through. So under that price, it's covering all of that. It's my contractor time. They 100% own their projects, but they have to invest that money. So it means you have to have some money around in order to, to do that. But if you're working hard to sell your books, then you know how many copies you need to sell to pay back what it costs. And then you know after that, whatever you sell is profit. Okay, the last con that I'll share, I know there's a lot of them, um, but the last one that I'll say here comes back to what I said earlier. Authors might not do their due diligence. And that means they might not work on all the things that they need to do that a traditional publisher would ask for. And this is where it comes back to the book proposal. Writing up an informal book proposal is helpful even if you're going to go ahead and be an indie author. And a a book proposal is going to have um, a lot of pieces that, you know, like sample chapters and synopses and all that kind of stuff. But even if you do it in a way where it's not perfected, like it's going to go to a publisher, it's really helpful for you to think through who am I writing for? That's going to be in there, the audience. What other books are out there like this? Who am I competing against in the market? Um what genre is this falling into? All of that's very important. How am I going to market this after I finish? Like I should have a marketing plan of some sort in place. And then when I those chapter synopses really help me in the writing process. When I get an idea for a book, I outline it into, you know, whatever chapters and topics I'm going to cover and write a little blurb about what's going to be in that chapter. Of course, as I'm writing, it's going to change, but um, it really helps me to give me a lot of direction. And I can go away for a week and get a majority of a whole book written once I have that all put together. So, The con is that authors might not do their due diligence. They might not work on that. They might not think through ahead of time where they're going with it. And you end up with a book that doesn't really have a focus or a point or really something sellable. And so when you treat it like a business, you can go ahead and pretend you're writing a book proposal to yourself that helps you to process through what your reader might need. That is some of the pros and the cons of indie publishing and having your own imprint. You might think of other ones. What I want you to do right now is think through some of those. I'll have them listed in the notes that go along with this on Substack. I want you to look through the pros and the cons, and I want you to ask yourself, are any of these things that I need to really think about? So if if I don't have gatekeepers, who is going to be my team that I'm going to run this by? And they have to be really honest with me. I don't want that, you know, your friends are always going to say every cover design you put out there is lovely. It's wonderful. I love it. And it's like, mm, ask some people who know something about it. What are you going to do to get past the stigma? What are you going to do to self-motivate? What are you going to do about the cost? What are you going to do about distribution? Where are you going to sell your book? And what due diligence are you going to do? When you start to put together a plan for how you're going to be an indie author, then you are not going to have a problem with any of the cons that come along with being an indie author publisher. All right, this has been Indie Author Blueprint. In the next episode, I'm going to be talking about 10 misconceptions about publishing books. So I hope you join me for that one.